So this is actually really good because, uh, let's see, anybody can talk about AES. Uh, everyone, if you don't, everyone else is talking about AES is not here, but that's here at least, I guess. So that, uh, ah, let's see. So AES. What do you know about AES? What do you remember from the presentations two weeks ago about AES? Yes. The advanced encryption. What, 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 it's advanced relative to what? Yeah, yeah. yeah so DES was the data encryption standard of the 1970s. But right, that, I mean, the fatal flaw of DES was the key was only to So with AES, I mean, you have to, they, they, they actually do this with common, right? So the 128 bit key is an option. Uh, I think there's a 192 bit key. 2 bit seems to be the other options that people use a lot. So in variable set, key, good. Uh, what else do you know about AES? I mean, is that a public key, private key, hash? Yeah, it's a symmet symmetric cipher, so it's, it's exactly like RC5. So you have to exchange a high key beforehand. If you have a 128 bit key, but the 128 bits are password, you're in trouble. Right? It's not really going to help. Right? So, so key, key enumeration attacks are absolutely a thing. It's just, it is not, not attempt to solve. Uh, if, uh, if you don't know what the private key is that you're supposed to be using to exchange data with people, uh, and then somebody sends it to you in an email, then I mean, how do you know who, who sent you that email? You have no idea. So this is not AES's problem. This is true for a lot of crypto algorithms. So it doesn't care how you get the key. Right? So you pick a key, right? So it'll be a 128-bit shared shared key. We are then going to be able to exchange data secretly. So the, the cool part about AES, and this is uh, actually got some buzz when it uh, first came out. AES actually it's completely based on uh, the Galois field of uh, 56 entry. How much of this do you remember? Because Aiden did great, great talk at the um, What do you know about the Galois field of uh, Give me any. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So base. So it's, it's uh, so it, it corresponds to base. Polynomial base two with, uh, with up to eight times. Right? So I have up to eight. Uh, so I get powers from basically you know the the, uh, the one or zero place, all the way up to the x to the seventh place. And I'm I'm going to stick basically binary numbers in the uh, in, in the coefficients, right? So each of these. So for example, it'll be like if I had if I had no higher order terms, it's going to be zero or one in both terms. So if I take a polynomial like one and I add it to a polynomial like one. I get two if I'm operating in you know normal like, uh, space. If I add uh, one plus one in GF uh, 58, what do I get? Get zero, which is really weird, right? I mean, the one plus one equals zero is sort of uh, you know. Uh, what does that mean? And, and this this works for anything. So x to the seventh plus one plus x to the seventh plus one equals zero, right? So anything will cancel itself out. But it's yeah. that's a plus x to the one plus x to the one, right? That that thing also needs yeah. the round off bit can fall off. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Weird yeah. So, so so if I have yeah, so x to the seventh plus x to the seventh also zero. There's no right. no, there's no two x to the seventh. Uh, questions about that. So, so, every, so if, if I want to know what the additive inverse of a number is, well, it's easy. So as if, 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 right. I mean, this is saying, as so 1 plus 0 equals 1, that's true in virtually every time. Right? 0 is the additive uh, identity. Uh, but 1 plus 1 equals 0 is basically telling you that you know, 1 cancels itself out. That's, uh, that's, and that's fun. That's the weird part of that. that makes sense. So, uh, what other operations do you know of where adding one to itself? So, so, if I combine a number with itself, I get zero. I mean, what, what it, so, normal addition doesn't work like that because we have carry bits. Right? It's, uh, so, if, if we throw away the carry bits, what are we left with? Yeah, it, 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 this, is, this is actually kind of funny. If you draw the circuit for doing, right, so, so true table for addition, so I'm adding zero plus zero equals zero. Right? So, here, here's my middle bit. Uh, 0 plus 1 and 1 plus 0 equals 1. 1 plus 1 equals 0 in the low bit and equals 1 behind it. Well, that's actual order, right? And uh, you figure out the truth table for, uh, for addition. 
and you ignore, and you ignore, ignore carries as just equivalent to XOR. So this is really weird, right? Addition and XOR and same operation. Or on a computer, right, you implement Galois field addition with this kind of XOR. So that's, that's easy enough. And that, that's good, right? This should make you feel like XOR is used a lot in crypto. So that, uh, that's, that seems too handy. Uh, so I got, we, we got addition taken care of. If we want to do subtraction, how would I do subtraction? I mean, yeah, plus x. So, so the weird part about this is like a equals minus a. So if I add a or subtract a, that's the same thing. So addition, subtraction, xor are all the same operation. Okay, so so this seems like a roll, right? We get we get some very convenient mathematically or uh, arithmetically convenient, convenient set of uh, math here. What happens if I do multiplication? Well, the answer is mostly stuff multiplicity. So, uh, what happens if I multiply one times one? Well, you, you, you multiply these just like polynomials. So, if I have one polynomial one, the polynomial one, well, that's one. It's easy one. So, okay, one is a multiplicative index. This should work great. Uh, what if I said uh, x plus one? Well, now, now this uh, this actually gets. Uh, Flashbacks of arithmetic of uh, algebra one, right? X plus one times x plus one. What do we got here? Uh, x squared two x plus one. Uh, there is no two x. It doesn't even exist. That's gone. That's uh, okay. That's so judgment so foil basically works. Right? So I can uh, and uh, uh, right, I, I could expand this out. Right, this is really long and that's really long. I can do exactly this like the old school book algorithm of binary uh, algorithm. And uh, I can just basically just step through the terms, add a shifted copy of this one. So, so the life is really good, except what happens if I get x to the fourth? Well, I mean, this is easy enough. I get uh, uh, x to the eighth plus 2x to the fourth. And first, the two is gone, plus one. What do I do with the x to the eighth? I don't even have an x to the eighth. So what's funny about this? So you can just drop this. That turns out to not work out. So, so if, if, for example, what this means, what the, if, if I just drop the high term, that means that x to the fourth times x to the fourth, I right, throw it a one. Uh, that, th those two multiply together give you zero. Is that good or bad? That's bad. That means that the multiplication is irreversible. No way to divide, we get back again. Right? You don't ever want to get zero from like multiplying non-zero values to have a field. So it turns out to make a field, and this is this is where this guy Galois uh, sort of uh, uh, earned his name in mathematics is, is to realize that there, there's actually only there aren't very many many ways to make a field out of this thing. So the real trick is we cannot throw away the high digits. The trick is we have to divide off the high digits using what we call a reducing polynomial. So the trick of the reducing polynomial is I, I, I pick a, a uh, I pick a polynomial that's actually going to work out. So in this case, I think it's x base plus uh, x plus four plus a whole lot of change. Let's see. So, uh, I think there's next x squared x squared one. Missing it, or we missed one term, which is uh, uh, if, if you look at the bit here, it's x one one b is uh, is the one that actually works out. Uh, see, what, what are the bits in hex b? There's nothing. Yeah. Yeah. 15 is 1, 1, 1, 1. 15 is 1, 1, 1, 1. Minus 4 is 11, which would be. So, uh, let's see. So I wanted an x and not an x squared. Right. So, 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 so the trick here is I just take the corresponding bits of. Uh, right. So I'm missing a squared because b is missing the, the 0. But there's a 1, that's the x to the 4th. I'm missing all the powers up to x to the 8th because that's 1. That's uh, three little bits. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so in other words, uh, so, so we can do all this stuff with binary arithmetic. Yeah. So I, I need to, uh, I need to reduce back into the field 
So, so the real trick is that rather than rather than just throwing away the high bits, the high bits are used to screw up the low bits. And this means we don't get zero back out, which is this is the, the, the real the real deal. So I quote unquote subtract all of this. I subtract all copies of this until uh, I'm, I'm in the field again. So what's subtract? Well, same as that, same as XOR. So if my XOR here, I'm going to basically cancel up the high bit and be left with all of these low bits. So, so it turns out that in, in the, this yellow field, using this reducing column, then I, I get the base x squared, uh, x to the fourth, and then x to the fourth equals x to the fourth plus x cubed plus the fourth. Well, there's all this change. The change is there so that we can have an inverse operation. If I, if I find a multiplicative inverse of x to the fourth, which turns out every element has now, I can multiply that and I'm going to get back to x to the fourth. Okay. So do you, you get the, the reducing business is really fun. That's, that's actually what gives multiplication some strange flavor. So one obvious question, so the obvious question, which one? Where did this point over here? Yeah, this, this 1, 1, B, it turns out it's not magical. Uh, it, it's that some polynomials work out, and some polynomials don't work out. They're irreducible polynomials of the group field. Uh, and it turns out if, uh, if, I, if I basically like assign multiplication like this, I get one basically set of you know, names for this thing. If I use a different reducing polynomial, uh, where everything, where there, you still have the multiplicative inverses, I get the same operations essentially, but it's just different names, right? So what I would call x to the fourth, would, that would be x to the sixth, and under some other reducing, work the same way. So it's uh, so, so this is kind of uh, to taste. This is the one they picked for AES. They just said we're going to use that reducing polynomial. That's the standard as long as it turns out. So can we do arithmetic in GF? There. Well, wait. I, yeah. How can you how do you know you have the you have x to four x to four x one? How do you know that that came from? You don't. But this is this is just this output of some multiple. It's, uh, so, so we're going to have the computer basically come up with the, uh, uh, the mul multiplication table. Multiplication table is super important. Right? That, that, that's what tells you what the inverse is, that's what tells you everything works out. So, so we should just have a compute uh, multiplication table. There's one more thing the multiplication table is 26 rows and columns. That's the key point. Good luck, kids. <laughs> Memorize that multiplication table. Uh, it's kind of, kind of hard. So, so it, it turns out there, there's Gallo fields of any prime, actually, uh, there's, there's crazy Gallo fields like GF of you know, 3 to the fifth or something has some stuff. Uh, the terms are uh, from you know, ternary, uh, but there's five of them. Uh, but we're, we're going to stick with uh, base 2. But I can look at GF 3 to the fourth. That's kind of a smaller. I mean, GF, uh, GF 2, 2 to the first, what, what, what is that? Of one bit. So multiplication has a work of one bit. Real easy. You multiply two non-zero values, get one. So there's only one non-zero value, it's one. I mean addition is XOR, it's a very simple field. Show yeah, so, so that's too simple to have anything interesting. I like two to the fourth because it corresponds to one next to you. So here here's the deal if we so I'm gonna have to share. So I've got uh, so right here is the multiplication table. So the way I came up with the multiplication table is I basically just do normal multiplication. So here's normal multiplication. Right? I, I basically shift along. So I, I work my way through the source. I look to see if the corresponding bit is set, and I shift the, uh, the input over. Uh, I adding. I shift the value. So, so the problem with this is this, this takes me way out of GF2 to the fourth. So then I have to, right, so I'm going to get some big value here that I have to reduce back into the field. So if I do this using an irreducible uh, uh, polynomial, then it turns out I get a multiplication table that quote unquote works. And it works in the sense that, for example, there's one one on any row. So exactly one one, and there's no zeros anywhere from non zero values. 
So let me show you how the, the easy way to mess this thing up. So for example, if I have a reducing polynomial of 1, 0, uh, who knows, uh, then uh, this corresponds to just pure wraparound. So for example, here now, 8, uh, eight times 8, 64, right? 4 times 4, 16, none of that stuff fits in the field in one hex digit. So we just throw the bits away. The problem is we get all these zeros. The zeros correspond to like there being no way to get back. Right? If I start at 4, I'll pull that 4. I have a 0. I have no, there's no way to undo these eggs. I don't know how to add it in. There's no way to add it in. So, so you know, that doesn't actually work as, redu as a reduction polynomial. If you, again, if you use a, a 1B is one I always try and do because it looks a lot like the reduction polynomial that works with the gate. And uh, is this a good or bad reduction polynomial? Okay. Yeah, it's, it's bad. There's zeros in it. 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 Definitely not what you want. Uh, and, and, but uh, let's see, if you search over these polynomials, I have no idea which ones are reducible in this field. Good or bad, that one looks bad. I see a zero already. Uh, I'm sure there are some rules somewhere. But I know one, three work now. Well, I'm sure there's some cool theory for why that, uh, why that works out. So if, if I use a reduction polynomial that actually works, so there's a reduction polynomial. So if you're worried about this, there's exactly one one in each row. There's no zero. This, this, this has to work exactly like this. If I start with D and multiply by whatever I multiply by, and I have some way to get back to the multiplication, I have to get a different thing out of the problem. And that's the thing you are supposed to be symmetric. So Right. So, so this question of what doesn't work. Yeah. 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 It has to. Be, it's, it's sort of like being prime in the field. Yeah. Uh, question. Questions about the reduction process. This is kind of strange, right? This is by far the strangest thing about, about doing this. So if we look, uh, if I multiply by 5, I'm going to get back to the same thing. Uh, if I multiply by 3, small values, it actually starts up being pretty small. So that's right. 2 times 2 is 6. Because we're actually still in 2. We have 2. We have 2. Those both are still 4. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 3 gives you 9. So 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 3 gives you 9. 3 times 3 gives you 9. So my, my initial loop, oh, wait a second, three, 3 times 3 gives you 9 when you're doing normal arithmetic. It, it, it's this middle bit canceling out. Right, right, right. Okay. Uh, yeah. So in, in here to the fourth, I've got uh, 3 times 3. What is 3? 3 is x squared plus 1. I'm multiplying by itself, x squared plus 1. I get x to the fourth plus 1, that's 5. Uh, and then right, in normal, I think I get 2x squared. So there's a carry and other, other bits. No carries. So there is no 2x squared. So 3 times 3 is 5. That's, that's just that's the first bit of math. Uh, so 
we we throw in areas to get here and say, hey, can I do anything like power doing? They never have energy or more or less fine until they start having to wrap. So four times four, sixteen, uh, and for sixteen is outside the field, so if the wrap back around the first we end up with three and it's only the rent. So so we I mean we had we had sixteen and one. We have to cancel out the high bid, and we cancel out the high bid using the curve. So what is the multiplicative inverse of 5? I multiply by 5. I should be able to undo that by multiplying by something. Okay, the cool, cool thing about inverses, right? If I if I say a times b equals one, that means that a is the inverse of b in those forms. So if you, if you just scan through here for the one, so yeah, basically you have about five times b is one, which means b is the multiple five. But if I multiply something by five, right? So I'm starting with three, multiply by five, I get ten. If I multiply f by b, I get nine. So, so the nice thing about a field is that uh, it all works, right? Uh, I have distribute, so, so uh, right, I have multiplicative inverses, <coughs> and distribute addition over multiplication, even though those are nothing like what we call division multiplication. Only. I can do exponentiation, and then I, all this stuff works, uh, and, and it's, uh, it all stays inside the field, and then once it's done, it's kind of strange and powerful uh, operation. Now, the trick is we just have to create the, the entries and fields so that they all work. And, and the trick here is to find the irreducible uh, polynomial over the field. So we can pick any bit size. So, for example, uh, I mean, you could have some variant of AES where we're, uh, we're doing a, this is GF2 to the ninth. One byte plus one bit is a byte plus a parity bit. And now, the trick is I just need a, see, so my the high bit of my reduction polynomial has to be a 2. And I have no idea which of these, but it's going to take a zillion of years to print that too. So I'm going to print this like block of madness. It does now need to be wider. So we do uh, we do this field mod, this enormous thing, and uh, it, have we found a good uh, reducer? Looks good so far. Yeah, you know, actually, okay. So, so in addition to printing out in, uh, in in digits, it works great up to some scale, and then past a certain point, it's like, is there some problem in here? I have no zeros. No, no zeros. Sounds sounds good. Actually, there hopefully there's exactly one one in each row in each column. But, uh, so we totally locked out. So that uh, so I, I believe that is a so if you look at the multiplication table, multiplication table is actually really. So it's, it's got this kind of weird repeating structure. There's sort of this X one. So the multiplication table. Th this looks relatively okay for crypto. The, their their patterns actually. So so bad bad things about using this for crypto. Zero times anything gives you zero, and that will actually just trash everything. Right? There's no multiplicative inverse. Which is the problem. Because we need to, we need to be a So it, it turns out they never actually do multiplication of two uh, data digits together in AES. Well, why not? Because you can't. If I multiply two digits of data together and one of them is zero, I don't know what the other one was. I just lost it. It's gone. So I make a perfectly fine hash, but that's just not okay for a uh, You can never multiply two pieces of data together. So what can we safely do in uh, AES without losing data? Well, we can add by anything. Right? Dash is just actual actually great. So we can multiply, but not uh, we can't take the multiply. Yeah. We can multiply by like four. That works fine. So that level shift shifts up. So what happens if I have uh, so I'm gonna just so here's like the L E S, this is the law encryption. Uh, and we say, well, this Galois field stuff seems fairly straightforward. We've figured out two operations, which are addition and multiplication. So I'm just going to spam those, and I'm going to say, okay, take the data, 
I'll fly by the key, I guess. I don't see here, but multiply you have your key. We'll have to, so somehow you pre filter the key to make sure there's no zeros. Uh, and then you add the other part of the key. Iterated. I, I, it will be very hard to predict the value you're going to have. We can pre it with them. Uh, so, so, uh, see, so I, 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 take, I take the data, multiply by the key, and then I just keep doing that again. So I multiply by a key is nine plus one. Uh, add to you, uh, so that multiply part and that part of the key, and then just keep doing that uh, ten times. What do I got? I've just I've just hidden the data. Hopefully, fairly well. it should be good. Let's get to X or and then okay, we get this to increase the multiply step. So good, bad, or indifferent. What do we got? Are there any plausible attacks against this site? If they make zero, luckily I'm adding the key, so yeah. Well, but, the, but the key itself then get kind of re-encrypted as well. Yeah. But when we add, we may end up with a zero temporarily. Yeah, that, that could be a little strange. Here's a big problem. There's an outbreak attack against this. Everything in this field, there's only two six entries in the field, right? One byte at a time, which means the brute force is totally puzzled for stuff in the field. So I take data of I, and I, I claim there's an algebraic equivalent to all this, which is I'm going to multiply by A and add B. And, and it's, I mean, A is going to be like the product of all the multiplicative key. And B is going to be even worse because it's the product of like the, you know, the, uh, basically the last additive key, and then the next last additive key times the last additive key. Right? And then the, I mean, this one gets multiplied by everything all the way along there. So it's, so it's some crazy thing. But there's only two many six of each of these. That's disaster, right? I mean, that, that's like brute force in a millisecond, <laughs> uh, which would be really, really bad. So, in, in other words, outbreak attack, big problem with uh, with using a small. So, how, how do you prevent outbreak attack? In other words, we want something that's not. So, so, so the reason outbreak attack works is basically because multiplication. It, this is all multiplication happening in a field, right? Multiplication uh, uh, distributes over addition. So, right, so, so the A is equal to the product of all the little keys. Right, have some, there's some product of this. We, we need to break this to make this perceptible out of these field So, what do we do? Well, we're going to have to So here's a crazy idea. We can't multiply, but it's actually okay to divide. And I'm, I'm using kind of a backslash there to indicate that I think you piece of I divided by the data. If data is zero, we've got to do something like uh, just say zero. So if, if I do this, okay. What is the algebraic equivalent of doing all this stuff? So I, I guess uh, we, we can write this uh, better as if here's the last key. We did, like, I do nine rounds. There's key of nine, of nine, uh, key of nine, and the thumb, thumb, nine. I'm going to divide by all the previous stuff here, which is key of eight, plus key of uh, nine, divide by the recursive. What is this outbreak look like to you? What is division distributor? Everyone tries this. Division doesn't have a distributor. Yeah, well, so if everyone always tries, so if you, right, we, 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 if you just covered uh, plus two, 3 five, plus 7 and divided by 5, right? Like, okay, that's 3 fifths plus 7 fifths. Life is good. Uh, now we want to simplify 
I have divided by three plus seven. And you can't do it. It doesn't split up that way. I mean, I can, I can take the bottom and multiply it on the top and cancel it out. But, uh, yeah, so, so, so uh, step one, we pick the multiplicative inverse, right? Because multiplicative inverse has fewer algebraic properties. Right? Our objective is to break the algebra. So, 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 so step one, right, is, uh, is, is you, you, hold, you hold this thing together like that. It's simply because there, is, there isn't that equivalent now. Right? So this means that I can actually have the long key space, right, lots of possible keys, and I'm going different places, right? I'm not just sort of, you know, reiterating this. And, and this is, uh, this is where cryptographers tend to get really embarrassed, right? Uh, because they'll, they'll come up with some amazingly awesome, fancy, you know, complicated, not this sophisticated deal, and someone else will realize that, like, you can just pull all those steps together. And, and it's equivalent to something that's not a very contributor, right? Which, uh, yeah. uh, so, 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 so don't, uh, don't do that. That's, that's step one. Ah, uh, see. So, if, if we look at the multiplication table, and, uh, basically, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the multiplicative inverses of each of these things. So, uh, let's see. So, I guess we pick, uh, I'm, I'm amazed my production formula, production formula actually worked out the first try. So if C equals zero, then I get the, I have the multiplicative inverse this time. So let's see, so uh, if C, if C is one, then uh, let's see, then I have the multiplicative inverse. So this is, uh, I guess, A inverse B. So after, after doing each one of these, I guess I can, uh, Rather than printing out every one of those, I can just print out the, uh, the inverse. I'm going to print out the inverse. So inverse of. Okay. We can run this in this bizarre yellow field. Uh, so, so zero has no inverse, right? Inverse of one is one. That's a big surprise. Uh, and it uh, looks like we get the inverse. So, see that. So I, I, I think arithmetic actually works. The inverses are nice. Uh, you notice how I calculated the inverses. I pretty much, I mean, this is the brute force approach of trying to I try every possible thing to be an inverse to the one uh, So if you're doing AES encryption, you don't, right, every time that I do a multiplication, I don't really want to have Is there some other way? What's it? Yeah. So for every possible, right, so, so you might come up with a just a multiple inverse table. Right? This is maybe how you And it's this is doable because there's only two to six entries in the table. Right? So if for each of the two to six entries in the table, I have to do two order two to six work, that's fine. Right? If there are two to the two to six, this would be totally hopeless. But uh, we can do that. Oh, let's see. <laughs> so I've I've seen folks do. Uh, let's see, apparently you can build a logarithm table. Still a little confused as to how it works. You have to pick again a generator for the field. So apparently you can uh, uh, do multiplication. You can do multiplication efficiently. Uh, you look up the two inputs in the logarithm table, which are each the size of the field, and then you have the output in the, uh, the anti logarithm. So basically take logs, add right, log turns addition and multiplication, and now you you uh, take inverse log and now you're back. Apparently that works. Ah, let's see. So, so, so now you're going to do six hundred tables. I think for a multiplication via table is that uh, your your table is pretty big. Right? There's sixty four multiple entries. So people will find it easy. Inverse is not that. Inverse you can get it once. So two to six hundred inverse table. Yeah. 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 And, and, and the, the, the same agrees with uh, the same agrees with AES is that you're not uh, you're never multiplying data elements. You're multiplying like a data element by some constant like four or three, and that uh, that means that you can actually set a table of everything times three, so that uh, that's 
this progress. Right. <clears throat> so if, if you look at uh, so, so what what's an AES? We got five fields, dish multiplication. Uh, there's multiplication table. So uh AES and then also so we've got some of these which is a phase of multiplication. Now what we'll do this alone is give you the square cube. All the numbers are zero to zero. There doesn't really have the numbers. Just putting it in. So you have to you got to fix that somehow. So there's a there's a big affine transmission. And it's going to be some Wikipedia entry. That's the. This false business is what makes zero to one. I know input data zero gives me output data zero that tells me a lot more. There's going to be an output data element that's zero, but it's going to be hard to pick what it is. Uh, <laughs> this is a little bit crazy because it's, uh, they call this an app line transmission, but it's the, I take the bits and I run them this table and I do all my arithmetic in the Galois field. Multiplying a bit by zero and one is very easy. Now I have to totally send up and I totally want to report it to the rules. How do you do this initially? Hey, we already had a table to compute multiple good vendors. We pulled this into the table too. So, so I mean, your table takes the fixed input value, it would have been just getting your multiple good vendors, so now you get a yeah, multiple good vendors plus the uh, yeah, my transmission, and now that's the whole S box, right? So, so this, I mean, it's funny because this is just a, a fancy mathematical way of saying, yeah, there's a there's a substitution. The, the, the problem is, uh, if I pick a random S box, and, and there's some uh, right, so, uh, then a random S box is not going to have an inverse, which means that I I have to do like a uh, Heisel structure where I'm basically taking half the data un untransformed to, to transform the other half. And that means I have to take a lot more rounds in order to get to some of the certain things. So, so the cool part about this our S box is, and it's crazy thing, but, uh, but the Afron transmission actually, I mean, the Afron transmissions have inverses, Afron transmissions and fields right, are really in the market. No, nothing. So, so this is all invertible. The invertible business means that we can do the deep version. That's good. Ah, uh, what? So, ah. Uh, you, you, uh, you're doing this on one byte at a time, right? I take my byte and run through the S-box. And of course, one byte at a time is not nearly enough. So we, we operate on four, a, a block of four by four bytes. We, 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 again, we, we, we've structured just the, uh, the S-box alone such that uh, hopefully we're not going to have some of these up there. But I get my four by four by four. Uh, I've done an operation independent of each of these. That's good because I get better work and I can do this. So I, I shift. And this is actually very a very simple shift in each room. I mix, which is doing a matrix separation along each column. And then it's just to uh, add in the round key. So it's, uh, if we're about this, there's, uh, there's just one big table. This is the only one. If you, uh, if you want to then you, uh, if, if, if you look, so, so for example, OpenSSL has a really good representation. Uh, It's not the best. Hmm. It's great for you don't look at the code. OpenSSL is actually fairly atrocious. Oh, yeah. the, the code is usually kind of scary. They, uh, they had a reason. Um, really good security flaws. Yeah. Right. And I was literally looking at that code. Yeah. Where is the code? <laughs> Yeah. I've located it several times. 
PS Core is the big one, and that's the one with the uh, all the tables. Here's what's funny about this. Look at the table. Table entry in index by 256 entry. Okay, the 256 part makes sense. It's full of byte. What on earth is that? So this is actually really beautiful. This has the S box. After the S box, what happens? You get a ship. Uh, after after the ship, then you do a next column which is a linear transmission line column. Where we can't we can't combine the information with the whole column, so you don't know what the value is. But you can do the linear operation on that column for the whole ship. Uh, with linearity, I can I can use the same one byte. And I have a table right, that says, what happens to my entire row is a function of my byte. Uh, and uh, let's see. And same for the next byte, same for the next byte. So there's just a ton of these. Uh, let's see. Should be what, 16? No, there's four, four one per row. Uh, so zero, one, two, three. Uh, I think that's the leftover stuff. So the bottom line is so So right, the, the end result of mixed columns is this linear transmission, right, which is basically a scaling. The scaling is pre-based into the, uh, uh, the table, and then a uh, uh, scaling in the nav. So you can't do the add yet until you know what all your bytes are, so you just do these things independently and then add all the uh, So basically, this is each row. Will be the key expansion step, which is basically the same. So here's the. Uh, it is interesting because they they spare no expense in the pursuit of speed. For uh, so it's like hmm, ten ten iterations, right? We will just uh, that's my favorite. Totally be based on right, ten you go times. Farther, yeah. Here's the yeah. yeah. <laughs> If you got to go more than ten. Yeah. It, it's because, I mean, it's 10 rounds for 122, 12 rounds for you know, 192, and 14 rounds. And, and it's the same exact deal here, right? We, we look up each byte in the table. You notice what's happening to the uh, S's and T's? Yeah. Uh, S0, right? Uh, high byte of S0, middle byte of S1, Lowish byte of S2 and the lowest byte of S3, and that makes the new S0. So this often happens in crypto. Right? You have some extremely complicated mathematical bag. Right? But basically, it uh, right. You could just say. These are the tables thou shalt use. And that would essentially be the equivalent. Right? But, uh, you, you, can, you can figure out what the values are of the tables by doing, and, and the tables are really not. Because they're, they're basically the output. It, it's, it's usually like, uh, you know, take, take the byte multiplied by 3 or something, which is not that much happening. Right? So, so, so the same byte gets multiplied by like 1, gets multiplied by 1, so you have 2 copies of the byte. Uh, and then uh, 
three, right? So uh, small, small uh, permutations on the thing. So like the middle two bytes of the table are always equal because the one and one and the like that's in the, uh, in the matrix using those columns. I should just call the matrix. Yeah, so, so there's a one one in each row here. Right? So, uh, that's where that's where duplicated bytes come from. So, so you can calculate this by basically manually computing Galois arithmetic for each one of these things, or you can just use giant table. Right? Giant table is by far the highest point. Is there any downside using a giant table? Other than um, that this guy, I hope you don't think. Um, your table has to be correct, or yeah, it's all disaster. I, I presume the table, my hope, my earnest hope, is that the table is not the result of somebody like okay. calculations on tape. Yeah. And the, the, the right way to make the table, actually, I usually have, when I have the giant horrible table in there, I usually have, as a comment, I have the code that makes the table. Because you it, um, it's, it's actually amazing, because just putting in the commas, for example, for four tables of the two to six entries each, there's a thousand commas. Or, or say, a wrong So I, I, I usually have, I try to make it where, like, the code spits out literally the table, including curves, which is just so I know where it begins and ends. Yeah. So, so yeah, you, you got to make sure the table's right. Tables should be generated, you know, automatically. We have easy little ways to do that. So I presume that is side channel is almost unfixable with a table. The data that I can print is the index in this table. Now, if there's conversation, so we saw like sequence. So, so I mean, worst case side channel is something like. Uh, have a table of uh, the powers, and I'm indexing the table of powers of big numbers using the bits of the key. Right? So every bit corresponds to a memory access. And that's really, it's, uh, it's pretty bad. Uh, and, and if you're accessing a big giant value, it's going to fill up all cache lines. And, well, you know, so so uh, your exposure to side channel effects, right? Uh, it's it's going to be basically a cache line. So you might think like. Sixty-three, sixty-four, nine, national. The cache line is sixteen bytes. Sixteen bytes. And uh, okay, we got four values that are all in the corner. So, are we okay? In other words, the two entry table. Maybe there's only sixty-four cache. So instead of getting the whole byte out, if they can see the fashions, maybe they can only get one sixty four to get out. If you, if you, uh, they don't know which are four values. Uh, you can that up. So you're slightly safer, but not the fact. And the big one is like typically, uh, in fact, there's a certain degree of sense. If, if they supply slightly different data, right, if they can, you know, trick you into doing it, if, if there's a sequence number somewhere and they'll say it's encrypting, for example, uh, then it might be that they can systematically watch for where it changes, so that the code, even those uh, finding those kinds of or two bits. I mean, you really don't want uh, to, to give away everything except the low two bits. That would be giving away all the keys. So if, if you're worried about uh, side channel, you kind of can't do this. What, what do you do instead? You, you, can, you can calculate the values. No, no table. Then it's just right. If you go to arithmetic, I, um, so side channel. Uh, recall the way that we reduce back in the Galois field. If this bit is set, do some work. Hey, there's a timing side channel here. Shoot. So, I mean, uh, are, are they, uh, so, so the timing side channel is more specific than network support? Assuming you know, the quiet network of the middle of the night. 
they, they could actually just you know, spam you a thousand requests and carefully measure the scan deviations of the response time. Uh, because the premise of the rule is like an answer. We're starting more just the quantum of work that we're doing to do one bit, you know, this is a one byte shift in XOR. Not that much happening. It's possible to use the binary, so I mean, we've seen some bitwise tricks, right? So, uh, if something is true, XOR this value. We don't have to implement the branch. The branch is going to be timing this. We can implement this thing by saying, like, okay, take the time bit. Lab it across all the little sign to the shift. Um, uh, once it's flat across, you would get one of the and which is the thing you're about to make. This means that if you split across zeros, you just turn this like, whole thing off. So all the same instructions are going to run you just 10 million times to get the x or zero. It's the same effect as the branch, but does not actually take the time of the branch because it's not susceptible to the set chain. Uh, do they care about that in OpenSSL? <laughs> I didn't find any implementation they care about that at all. So I don't know what that means. Uh, oh, I think if they have... Um, is there some ultra-paranoid? Yeah, there's a general information policy. There's a whole bunch of in-depth for that. Yeah. On some of the other... Early information processing standards. The whole other thing they do based on that. It's like you're in fix mode, it just gives up instead of saying that. No, that's just that you get you know, specific, like how you erase data. So that's the that's the yeah, same that's as like, right. oh, with malware on memory, and we also do our own speeding up. Yeah, that's a that's a side channel. I mean the the, the ones that have gotten a lot of press lately there were, yeah. I mean, cache timing is amazing because, I mean, on the cloud, that's hard to defend against there. But there's a lot of other stuff. I mean, if, if you leave your data around, it's constantly, uh, like, up to his red stuff, so he got it. So, right. Uh, yeah, the uh, actual implications. You know, the, the other interesting part here, uh, it tends to be a lot of. Uh, Cache timing attack mitigation. So, yeah. so, so here's one way to meet, make yourself totally robust against such a more robust. Right? Before you do your encryption, you just prefetch the whole table. Easy enough. Right? Then, then if they're trying to figure out, well, which entries in the table do we access, because that'll tell us the path. So that's the uh, progress. Uh, you, you still have to use it. So there is still some vulnerability there because uh, they may, maybe they're running their code ranks times you, maybe there's OS time slices that could be in after you prefetch before you actually change it. And they, they could do some high speed uh, cache timing tag, but that, that definitely makes it a lot harder for them to pull off. Right? Pre prefetch is a simple countermeasure. Looks like they're using 64 bit. This is the uh, AES x 86 core. Yes, that's not the actual implementation they use for the timing thing. Code in here somewhere. Yeah. 
where where is the actual code? <laughs> so this is the thing, right? So it implements <laughs> a pointer to a cipher, and that cipher implements a pointer to a function pointer to some generic. So that calls it, and that's implemented somewhere in the tree. That's a very self-evident programming style there. That you were from the no pointer thing comes because it literally takes it and then this function that says, you okay, know, function pointer by name has a table in some way and it just crashes away. And then no pointer now. And then it just crashes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, there is no encryption right there. I, I presume then it calls some appropriate. Yeah, I, I walked through the debugger. That, that looks like the kind of crazy stuff where it says, like, do you have the AES new instruction uh, instructions on your CPU? Can we actually use them? If so, make the function point report to the uh, assembly. So, so the, the AES new instructions are actually folded into the code. Yeah. Yeah. Except for the debugger and the like, AES new instructions right there. And then it's over. And I just like, way so too many of these. X eighty six sixty four. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what is it? What's it called? It's called AES Pink. Leave the same structure. Oh, there, there's, there's a lot of stuff. Okay, AES Inc. Right. So there's an AES encode code basically that works on repeating it. They, they have the assembler the mods in there. After some prefix buzz. Yeah, so. Uh, so, 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 so the AES. I mean, it's it's a metric software. Samples the data according to So it's kind of cool now. I mean, like, I'm realizing GS, uh, GS PPAs, I don't know very much else in crypto is actually. We we use uh, mod big times all the time to find the solution. Apparently, it's possible to find elliptic curvature over a binary field. So it would be like uh, uh, that would be a much much bigger one. And, and then the algorithms start to get really important. So so for example, if I want to elliptic curve, I might do it on GF two or two fifty six. Not two to the A, just to essentially two to fifty six. But then, which is some of this ginormous field. And then you need, you know, the irreducible polynomial to reduce that back. You need to do multiplication in the usual way. But one advantage is you don't actually have to do any divides, which means when you're side of the side channel. Most of the elliptic curve stuff, people don't like this because there's a patent on doing elliptic curves in binary two. And uh, the prime fields don't have patents on displacement you know, stuff, so that's kind of a short term, 20 year reason to avoid that. Not really, but, uh, but that's, that's the but apparently, I mean, there are definitely elliptic curves to find over any field you feel like, and so uh, you can find over there. So, the big advantage of this is like how many bits we got? Exactly 2 p right? We're doing lots of efficient operations like XORs, good efficient operations like uh, multi precision, you know, efficient multi precision. So, there are four cool things about it. We can't do multiplication via table, apparently. Well, it's way too big. Way too big. Uh, even even doing logarithms and stuff doesn't really help you because I mean now we can't do a full multiplication table with fifty six or two squared. Uh, we can't even do a table with this inverse of shape. So uh, multiplication inverse is hard. Yeah, I, I don't know how hard multiplication inverse is, and I have no clue about that. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. I, from what I can see in web browsers, and most most implementations are using prime field with the curve. If you're interested in finding a field theory, there's a whole course in finding field theory. Right, the question. Does anyone want to hear more about binary fields? Would you like a homework on binary fields? Or I'll owe you a homework on binary fields. But you want it or not. And yeah, it's it's also surprising how I mean the mathematics are fairly you know sophisticated, but there's they're sort of manageable. The implementations can get really really hairy, uh, and and it's because they're they're fighting stuff like 
we want this thing to be extremely efficient. We want this thing to be robust to the side channel. We want this thing to be configurable for MRS. We want this thing to be compatible with the existing federal and efficient processing standard. And uh, that's where things get. So uh, again, Wednesday projects are due, uh, and uh, I was really happy to watch it. I'm looking forward to seeing the final, final version. Okay. Calling in, guys. Well, thank you for having us. <laughs>